everyone, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Albums and welcome to the Country Craft Creations Remember the Time Hop. All of the information on winning prizes will be listed in the description box and uh, I invite you to join along. Go, don't forget to comment. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications as well. And please like this video. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about my project. My project is a calendar and I had set this up as a crafty goals calendar. A little history, a couple of years ago I joined a collab and it was cra setting crafty goals. And every month we would get back and go on YouTube and tell everyone whether or not we hit our goals that we set. And I had used just pieces of paper to set my goals. And then the following year, I used a bullet journal to, to do my goal setting on. And I still use it to this day. But it takes a lot of time. And then Country Craft Creations came out with this paper line, Remember the Time, which is a calendar collection. And it is exclusive to Country Craft Creations. And I have used that to set up my 2022 um, Crafty Goals journal. Now you don't need to use it for crafty goals. It could just be a calendar collection, but the way I have it set up is for goal setting. And I wanted to show you these two different formats of it. The one I used was with these uh, binder rings. Um, and obviously when it's all done, I punched holes and, and put the rings on. But I also have a mini cinch and you could also use a cinch to put it together. So that is a possibility for you as well. Um, I used the collection Remember the Time and the um, additional paper collection that came with it. And I'll list that in the description box because I did use a lot of paper, but there still is a lot left over to do other things with. I mean, as a matter of fact, look at this great paper here. If I was doing a junk journal, I probably would use this for one of the pages in the junk journal. Isn't it beautiful? So anyhow, let me walk you through, and this is how the format's gonna go of this video. I'm gonna do a walkthrough of this collection, then I'm gonna show you how I put it together, and I'm gonna start with the month of January, and then I'll go into more detail in the month of February. I mean, it goes together real easy. And then while I put the rest of the months together, I will talk to you about goal setting and that kind of thing. So if it's something that's not up your alley, you can just skip on by that. Um, but if it's something you're interested in, stay tuned to the end of the video and you will see it. So let me walk through the Remember the Time goal setting calendar. I used as a cover just a piece of cardstock. I didn't laminate it, but I could have. And then this was from the cover sheet of the Remember the Time paper collection. And so was this. And I show you in this video how I made that. So then we open it up. And this is where I start my goal setting. And here is January. And you see I have these tabs for the month. And like this circle tab was part of the collection. So you have a cover page for the month. And then another page for the month to help sort of set the stage. Each month has a little bit of journaling. So this is where you can maybe document what you want to accomplish for the month of January. And then following that is the calendar. And I have not put the dates in yet. And then a planner for each week. Now you could use this without goal setting and just use this as planner. These pages will be in the file section of Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations Facebook page if you want to print them out. There's um, two on a page and you print on both sides of the page. So there we go. And so there are obviously 52 weeks. So some months you'll see we'll have more uh, weeks than others. And then again, this is part of my goal setting routine. This is goal one, two, three, and four. And then here's my commitments. And then there is the end of January, beginning of February. So we will just take you through that real quick so you can see how it goes. So again, the month, the planner, a couple of pages for each of those. 
and then my goals the end of February, beginning of March. So it's pretty easy. Obviously, it's easy to put together. Um, each month is the same. But um, it's fun and it's pretty. I found that I was spending a lot of time when I was putting together my bullet journal on drawing and, and drawing out the months and making squares. and I just was so much, so time consuming. So this is so much easier to do. And again, you could do either format. You could use the rings. I had this put in a closet, so I need to open it up. Or you could use um, a cinch to put in those. Or you could bring it to an office supply store and they could put it together for you. So I know that they different office supply stores do that. I think this month had five weeks in it. That's why it's a little longer. There's my goals and commitments. There's May turning into June, which is beautiful with the roses. There's the goals. July. Nice and patriotic. There's the planner. August. Love the colors. Look at how vibrant these colors are. I tried to put in the birds. I'm not sure if they're the uh, birds of the month or they just match. I don't know, but they're very pretty. And there's the weekly calendar. Here's September with the asters in September. And a beagle. Hmm. Beautiful colors on that. There's the weekly planner. And then goals for September. October. Of course, it's got a focus on pumpkins. Not, not too scary, but pretty cute. There's the weekly planner for October. And then November, of course, we have turkeys. And then the weekly planner for November. And then December. All the dogs and cats in there. That's adorable. There's the calendar. Oops. There's my goals. Weekly planner for December. And then the end. And the last page. And I just have it blank on there. So that is the walkthrough. Now stay tuned and I will show you how I made this. Okay, we're going to make the cover. And to make the cover, you need a sheet of plain cardstock. And I use my colors cardstock and sandpaper has a little bit of a sheen to it, which is fabulous. Um, but you're not going to see it too much on the cover. And first I cut it into two pieces that are five and three quarters by eight and three quarters. And then the cover sheet of the, the Remember the Time paper is what I'm going to use to decorate the cover. The good thing about this is it's got all of the months represented and I thought that would be perfect. So I cut, and let me get my ruler to tell you exactly. I cut uh, about three and three quarters inches, just up to the top of this uh, Country Craft Creations tag. And then I cut it in half by six. Now I'm gonna need to cut it down some more because the My Colors card stock is five and three quarters. And I will do that. Um, and then I cut this part that says remember the time out. And I may later cut out where it just says calendar and add that to the bottom. But I mean, it's for me and I know it's a calendar. Um, so I might leave it. All right, so here's the shiny part of the My Colors cardstock. It's not really shiny, but the sheen's on it. I'm turning it upside down. And I am going to cut these down so I want a little border around it, so I need to cut off about a quarter of an inch. So I will cut this to um, uh, about five and five eighths. 
So it's going to be about three and three quarters. Well, it's a little bit longer than three and three quarters. Three and seven eighths to five and five eighths. So we'll cut those two pieces like that. And then I also will cut a piece of darker cardstock. I have black because uh, the writing is in black. You could use a blue or whatever you want. And um, just a, a sixteenth of an inch bigger because I just want a small border around it. I don't want a very big one. So let me cut this down and we'll return. Okay, now I'm going to put everything together. I've uh, inked around the edges and so I'm going to put oops, these two pieces on. And again, this is the back side, not the side with the sheen of the My Colors cardstock. So the part with the sheen will be on the inside of the planner. So there's that. So now I did cut down a piece of the My Colors cardstock, two inches by five and three quarters. And I'm going to put this down. And you could, if you wanted to, center it. But I'm going to come down. I'm going to go just about to the edge of the top piece. So covering more of the bottom. Um, just to add a little bit of interest, you, you could center it if that's what you prefer. But I decided not to in this case. And I would have put it even lower, um, but I didn't want to cover up too much of those months. All right, so I also took a stub punch and punched out the corners of the title. And I inked around the edges of this. So I'm going to center it on the black cardstock that I also used the stub punch on. And then I further got another piece of Oh, I don't know what month this was. June, maybe? Um, I just like this pinkish melon color because it matches with this. I mean, you're not going to see that much of it. You could just use a scrap of anything for that. But that sort of toned down the black a little bit. And then I'll put that there. I was toying with the idea of putting something like that. What do you guys think? Or there's this. Now, uh, when I do this, this is all you see in, in my... I sort of... I think I'm just going to leave it plain. I mean, and you also could use ribbon if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave it plain, though, because I can't decide, so... Just leave it plain. I'm going to center this on here. Center it top to bottom and side to side. So there is the cover. And like I said, I might take where it says calendar and put it down here. Just calendar. Um, I don't know. So now here's the inside, and you can decorate this how you want. And you also can laminate this. I am going to uh, laminate it just because I do have the laminator. Um, and then you can put paper on the inside. I was trying to decide if I want to put a pocket on the inside. I don't know. I might leave that plain. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. But let me put it all together. And then I'll do a walkthrough, and then you'll see what I ended up doing with it. So I'm going to show you what the components are that I put together for each month. So then you can see them, and then we will do one together. Then I'm going to do the rest of the months with a voiceover and talk to you about uh, why I designed it this way. So for the first part of the month, this is a little bit larger than everything else. Um, I'll give you the measurements when I do the February one. 
So on the top or on one of them, I have this the circle. There's three of them with the kit, and of course you can punch out a fourth one if you want to back them. But so that so I know this is January. I mean it's going to be in the beginning of the year, so I'll I will know. So then the back of that page has this cut apart and one of those border strips. Sometimes I'll put it on the bottom, sometimes I'll put it on the top. It depends on where this matching circle tab is. So there's that. Then the next page, there's three of them for each month, three pages that I make with the scrapbooking paper. Um, it's got the title of the month, so you have the January. Then each month also has a three by four cut apart, so I put that over another border strip and one of these embellishments to the side. And it'll go to the right side, the left side, depending on if the cut apart has a design on the right side or the left side. So there's that. And then on the other side of that one, that is where I put the month. And of course, as you see, I haven't filled in the dates yet, but I will. And then another border strip, strip on the bottom that sort of coordinates with this design. Then I put in my weekly planner and I printed out um, enough for the 52 weeks and some 11 months have four of these. May has five of them just because May has more full weeks but ultimately it doesn't matter because you're going to put the date on it and if um, January and I have to look at a calendar but let's say January 1st is on a Thursday you would just start numbering here but then for the next month you would write 28, 29, 30, 31, 1, 2, 3. So the weeks may go into different months, but that doesn't bother me. So anyhow, there's the weekly planners. And I said I have four. There's two of them. So that is four weeks. I really don't need that. Um, and then there is the goal setting page. And I'll talk to you a little more about how I do my goal setting once I'm doing the voiceover, doing the months, commitments, and my upcoming. And then this is like a divider for the next month. So, and on here, I've got my goal page, which I've printed out uh, and then cut apart and then left this opening in the center plane, but I will fill it in. You'll see when I do February with just a little strip of paper. Um, just because then it sort of uh, becomes part of the paper. You don't notice it as much. But again, I'll show you when I do February. Um, and these, by the way, and these are available in Country Craft Creations. If you're a member of their Facebook page, it's in their, um, in their files. So there's that. Um, so yeah, so I have the goals and commitments and upcoming. So that is one month. Now next I will start and I will do February and you will see what that entails. Okay, so the cover page of each month is a little bit larger than the other ones. This is five and five eighths by eight and five eighths. So it's just an eighth of an inch larger, but that way it's just easier to find once I put all the pages together. So this is from the one paper that obviously has the month in it and um, the back we will start and we will embellish the back. So the back is going to just have, of course you've got the other side of the circle and I'm sorry I already had placed the circle and here's a hint about the circles. I, my intention was to do them in, in go down in descending order, so January, February, March, April, May. But then as I got through a couple of months, I thought, you know what, I'll do January through May and June through December. And then for whatever reason, I did June, July, and August, and August was down the bottom. So then I did September, October, November, December. Anyhow, it didn't work out as I wanted it to. If you want to measure exactly where you want it, I would do six going down and then six more for the second half of the year, but you can do it how you want it. 
So anyhow, there is that, and I've already put that on, and I just simply glue one and put it on a little more than halfway, and then glue another one and put it on just to match that one. So here, I've got a couple of these border strips to use, and I decided that this border strip was not going to work for me because it is portrait, so I am just going to turn it over and have that even though I don't like how this red sort of blends in with that. And I did try to darken up the um, inking on it and it helped a little. I didn't want this one because I thought this would get lost and looks better on another page. So anyhow, I'm going to do that border strip and I'm simply going to add glue. Um, and there's some of the border strips that have a very visible pattern that there's a center point and it goes from there this obviously the back of this isn't that important so when that came to it i um, centered it on the page now this one i didn't need to center it but it didn't make any difference and then this i will center over here and center on the page and there is that and then I will just simply, you can put it in your paper term if you want to, but it's just as easy to grab your scissors and trim that. So there is the back of the cover page. Now this one, so now the, the ones we have left, this is the last page. And so I want the calendar and then the goals to be on matching papers. I don't know why. It just figured I'd do it consistently that way. So I'm going to go ahead and put the calendar on. And I'm going to have it towards the top of the page. So I am about three-eighths of an inch from the top and center it on the page. And then I am using, is I going to use that one or this one? I like this to match that and also to show. I'm going to use this one because the background of this at least matches the background of that. And I'm just going to put it up against the edge here. And then take my scissors and trim that. Okay, and then on the back side of this, this is where I will put the month and the cut apart, the three by four cut apart, and then um, another border strip. And I did this sort of assembly line. I went through and cut all of the cut aparts and then I inked around the edges and um, it doesn't take long really you know you look at it and like oh my goodness I dread that but it's not it doesn't take that long when you time it you realize it's not as terrible as you thought it would be grabbing my cloth to wipe that and then I'll put this and originally I was trying to center it and then put it so when you write on it, your writing won't. I'm, I'm doing that. So the lines here, I'm matching the lines up with the, lo the bottom of the border strip. And really just so if you're writing something, you don't... Um, have to go over the bump of where the border strip is but ultimately I'm probably paying too much attention to that and that's not a big deal and then I've got a plant over here and so I could put one of these cut aparts there I probably will use this one although I hate that this is going to face that way because I would rather that face into the center of the page that's just me but I don't know that this will show up. I mean, we've already got the red here. Anyhow, you can use which one you use. I'm going to use this one just because I think it'll show up better. 
And when I went through the months, you'll see, I actually did it pretty quickly. I was very proud of myself that I didn't think too much about it. I just put it down and I really was happy with how it came out. All right, so there's those two. Now this is going to be the last page, so I'm leaving that alone now. This is going to be my goals, upcoming, and commitments. Well, goals, commitment, and upcoming. So, since that's going to have the purple background, you could, I inked around the edges just by folding this and then inking. I inked around the edges first. Then I folded this, and I didn't have a tight fold. I just sort of creased it and then inked here and then folded this way so it's still rounded and inked there and then I'm going to add a little glue now this is just me being crazy and took a little strip of paper and put it there And I'll show you why. And then I'll take my scissors and trim it. And you don't have to do this. You could just put it on. But see, when you put it on, it sort of blends into the background. And it looks like four separate pieces of paper that are evenly spaced. But that's just me being crazy. I'll put that on and there we go and then I have my commitments and commitments could be anything they could be birthdays you've committed to yourself you're going to make a card they could be um, parties doctor's appointments if you're using this as a crafty goal sheet it could be videos that you've promised to put out in a certain time so they can be anything. Um, all right, so now I'm going to do this to correspond with that. So I just sort of figured that's about there and put glue on just about half of it. And I put that on first so then I can see what else. Now I fussy cut some things out of the um, leftover paper from here and I save them to embellish this page. So I could go like that, but then that goes like that. I don't like things in an obvious order. So maybe like that. Not maybe, definitely. So I'm just gonna glue that in. And it's okay that I'm covering some of that. It, you know, I'll just have to write around it and that'll go on the bottom. And there's other things in the cut apart sheet. I mean, I was trying to cut out all of the birds. I missed this one. I might go back and add it because I like the birds. You could take this flower. You could take the little girl. I mean, you don't have to have commitments on upcoming and a long strip. You could have shorter ones. Um, so you could do what you want. So there is that. And then I will include my weekly planner. And once I get this all done, I will start writing and dating it. So week of, on all of them, this week and upcoming. So it will go like that, that, and that. So you'll open to February, and this is the cover sheet. And then there's that. And then this could just be... Um, something you want to remember, your gratitude, um, part of your goals that you wanted to focus on in February, birthdays coming up. This could be anything you want it to be. Oops. Then you turn the page and there is the month. And of course you write in the dates and then you write the dates in for the week, the weekly planner. And then you write in what your goals are for the month. And do this in the beginning of the month. Don't, don't wait. And these goals correspond with the goals that you've set in the beginning of the month. And I will talk more about this as we do the um, 
I'm going to do the voiceover and talk about setting goals. Now, if that's not anything you're that interested in, you can forego this sheet and forget about it. And you don't even need it on here. This could be birthdays. This could be, um, again, a word of the month. It, it could be whatever you want it to be. So that is how I have designed each month. So I will have January and then February. And um, you've already seen the walkthrough. If you want to, you can go back and check that out. But next I'm going to do a little fast motion on putting all of the months together and uh, talk about how I will use this planner in my crafty goal setting. So thank you for watching this month and I'll see you at the end of the video. All right, so I'm going to complete the book and as I uh, make the pages, I'm going to talk to you about goal setting and how you can include that in this goal crafty goals book. So so you can have goals whatever you want. You might have health goals, education goals, you might have crafty goals. Let's say your goal is to send out birthday cards in a timely manner. Last year you realized that you forgot a couple of birthdays and you don't want to continue to do that. So you decide that this year you're going to make sure you get those birthday cards completed, made, and sent out in time. So your goal in the beginning of your book, goal number one is cards. And you might write um, complete cards on time, mail out cards one week ahead of the birthday. Um, and... and write a note in each card. I don't know, whatever you want that goal to include. And then in each month, goal number one is going to be cards and you have to identify exactly what you need to do. So you might in February have three birthdays that you want to make sure you have cards for. So in January, your goal is going to be to make three cards for birthdays and then make sure that you write on the dates that they are due to be sent that a uh, card for Annette needs to be sent on February 3rd so it'll reach her in time for the 10th. So make sure you put that ahead of time so you know to work towards that goal. Now one of your goals might be um, use up paper that you got from Country Craft Creations. So your goal number two is use your stash. So in January, you're going to put down that you want to use up all of the Valentine's Day paper that you've received. So write that down in January to use uh, Valentine's Day paper. And in January, maybe even put down the weeks that you're going to finish up those paper. Now don't give yourself a crazy... Um, goal of finish 22 paper pads in a month. That's not realistic. But you could say you want to use one paper pad a month and use that for the cards you need. So as far as each month, you're going to write down the goals. So you're going to reiterate the goals and put down on the weeks that you need to do these goals, what you're going to do. And if you don't get it done in that week, then switch it to the next week. No big deal. Just put it to the next week, things come up, and then you'll continue to work on your goals. So if you forget to mail out cards in January, that's okay. Be better in February and try to do that. So I find when I have everything written down, it is easier for me to follow. I break it down into smaller tasks and it's not so overwhelming. So that's a quick overview. If you want more information, I'll put um, a link in the description box of some of my goal setting videos and check it out if that's something that interests you. So that is what I have for the Remember the Time Hop. Don't forget to comment and go to the next video. There is links in the description box on who to see on which day and don't forget to comment on all the videos. So thanks so much for watching. Have a fabulous day.